In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with backend pagination when you're using a Xano collection in a WeWeb app. So here in Xano, I have a table with seven items and I have an API endpoint that fetches this content. So if I run and debug this endpoint, you can see that Xano will return an array with all of my items. So then in WeWeb, I have this collection that fetches this get content endpoint. And when I click continue, you see I get these seven items and they are displayed on my page through a collection list. So I bound to uh, my collection data. I can bind to my collection directly if I wanted to, in any case, those seven items are displayed on the page. Now I could add front-end pagination. We have a dedicated video on that topic, but let's look at enabling back-end pagination in Xano so that Xano only returns, let's say two items uh, instead of all seven items. And this is obviously not very helpful when you only have seven items in your uh, table. It's helpful when you have hundreds or thousands or, or millions of records, depending on, um, on what you're working with. So in Xano, on my endpoint here on query all records, I am going to go to output and here I will enable paging. I'll say, okay, I want to include metadata and the total item count, and there will be two items per page. So if I save this and I run this again, let me reset this and make sure I've saved this. So see now, instead of just a list of an array of items, I also have this information. So metadata about the number of items received, current page and all of that. Let me make sure I save this and run the debugger. Now, instead of getting just a list of items, you see I have, I receive an object with information about the number of items received, the page I'm on, the offset, the offset is uh, which item um, it's starting on. So if it's zero, it's the first item uh, from the table. And here I have my array of items and you see I only have two. So if I unfold this, I have item with ID one and item with ID 22. If I publish this, and I go back to WeWeb, if I refetch my collection, now I, only, I receive those two items and the information uh, from Xano, the metadata. And so, now, instead of binding to um, to the content, the collection itself, I need to go inside the data and look for the items themselves. So bind to the array of items. Oops, let me remove this. And I only have two items. I have the two items that Xano sent me, which is not ideal because I want to wait. I want to wait to uh, get to fetch the other items as well. So in order to do this in Xano, I will do a couple of things. I will first create an input for my offset. So the item that the first item that I want Xano to send back. There we go. And in query all records in external, I will map the offset. So this was created because I enabled paging here and I will map the offset to the input, the integer input that I just created. Now, if I save this, if I run and debug, you see that the default value of the offset is zero. So if I run this, I will get the first two um, items. In this case, ID 21 and 22. And if I select if I want to start on offset two. If I run this again, then I will get items with ID 23 and 24. And yeah, that's the idea. So if I 
publish this, add offset. There we go. Let's publish this in, in WeWeb. Now, if I go back to my collection here, now I can bind to an offset. So let's say I want to fetch, I don't know, offset four. So it will start on item, uh, on the fifth item. So zero, one, two, three, four. And I will get the two items after that. So this we want to make dynamic. We want to make sure we make it dynamic. So let's add a paginator on our page. There we go. And we will enable custom pagination. The total number of items in our table, we have this information in the data sent by Xano. So items total, we have seven items in total on our um, in our table. We, we return two items per page. And the offset, we want this to be dynamic. So we were going to create an offset variable. And it will be a number. By default, it will be zero. We want to start on the first item. And we will bind this offset here of the custom pagination to the variable we just created. And now on our paginator, we will create a workflow that is triggered on change. So on change of the paginator, we will update our offset variable. We will update it with the information from the event, from the pagination, the paginator event. So offset here. And by the way, instead of using offset, offset, we could use the current page. So this page, and then instead of creating an offset input, we would create a page input uh, in Xano. You can do one or the other. Uh, what's important is that then you map the input to this. So if we were wanted to work with the current page, we would we would create a page um, input here and map it here. Here we're using the offset. And so now after I've changed, uh, I've updated my offset variable, I will want to refetch my collection. So the content collection. And here in the content collection, I want to make sure that my offset is dynamic. So instead of writing in four, hard coding four, I will bind it to this variable, which remember we're updating with the workflow on our paginator. Now let's see in preview mode how that looks. There we go. So that's how you can set up backend pagination in your WeWeb Plus Xano app.